right, I'd like to welcome everyone to the July the 16th, 2020 month of the school board meeting. Would you pray with us, please? Dear Grace Heavenly Father, we're so thankful for this day that you've made. Thank you for all your blessings that you put down upon us. And Lord, we pray that you have put a hedge around all of our kids and all the, of our county, the teachers, the staff. And, uh, Lord, we just ask your guidance and direct, uh, direction and Lord, the blessing. And Lord, pray that everything we do tonight will be holy and acceptable in your sight. Lord, give us the knowledge and wisdom to be good stewards over everything we're in charge over, that all of our students will be successful in life. And Lord, we just give you praise for all that you do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, okay. how can the schools provide students with the skills, knowledge, and support to achieve excellence in our lifelong learners? All right. You all have your agenda in front of you. If there's anything we need to pull off to discuss or anything we need to add? If not, I need a motion to approve. I'll make a motion. I'll second. I've got a motion and a second. Any comments? All in favor? Motion carried. All right. We have some recognitions tonight. And I know not everyone is present that's on my list, but I'm going to read them off each one at a time just because they at least deserve to have their name shared with us this evening. But each and every year, as you're aware, we always have retirees. And if y'all don't mind, I'll take this down for a few moments. We always have retirees. And this year, like none others, that's the case. Uh, we just ended a most unique school year. And we had some individuals that uh, decided to retire because it was their time to make that decision. We want to recognize them tonight. And as always, any time we have retirees, those that are present here tonight, as you look out, board members, there's a lot of experience that Ohio County Schools is losing. And as Mr. Hale so well put it, there's always somebody that's going to step in and replace us, including me and every one of us that's in this room at some point in time. But there's a lot of experience in this room. There's a lot of expertise, if you will, and you're going to be missed. I know at each of your schools and for the district, you did a great job. And uh, we're going to miss you, but this is something you've earned. You've earned this right, and we're happy for you, and we wish you nothing but the best in whatever the future is going to hold for you. Uh, no particular order. I'm just going to read off these names. And if they're here, we do have a clock that we will present to, to each individual. If they're here, I'll try to take one out to just show you, and the rest of them will leave in the box. So we have a clock, and it says Ohio County Schools on it, and it says thank you uh, for your service, Ohio County Schools. And we're gonna present each of our retirees this evening with that. And a couple, I think, have already picked theirs up in advance. No, no bells. It's a, it's a silent clock. And if you don't put the batteries in it, it won't even make that ticking noise. Uh, so in no particular order, we're going to start here. First, uh, Doug Martin, one of our bus drivers. If he'll come up. He's not with us tonight. Uh, but Doug, I'm trying to remember with it and have this written down, but Doug has drove a bus for us for many years. Most of there at the Wayland area. And uh, we're certainly going to miss him. He retired a little bit before the school year was over. Patty Hancock is another bus driver that has retired, and I don't see Patty here with us tonight, but she's one again. It's been with us a long time, ran the uh, summer feeding route pretty much each and every year that she was here, always willing to go the extra mile. Beverly Emery, bus monitor. And she's not with us tonight, uh, but Beverly will be missed as well. Same with Bobby Asbury. Uh, that is, of course, our high school principal's father. Bobby has retired and is no longer a bus monitor. And with everything going on, I can understand why some folks decided to uh, stay in this evening. <laughs> Custodian. Uh, this guy, known him for a few years now, uh, has done a great job. And he was started there when I first met him. He was at the vocational school. Daryl Conkright. Daryl, if you'll come up, I'll give you this clock. Usually I shake everybody's hand or hug them. Right. I'll just... For team high five tonight. Next year. And uh, <laughs> if you don't mind, we'd like to get a picture. If and if you'll just, uh, we won't have to stand together if you'd prefer not to. But if somehow take a picture, 
Uh, makes no difference to me. No. But I got my shots yesterday. <laughs> and we'll there get you a picture. I'd like to share that on Facebook later. One, two, three. Thank you, Mr. Darrell. Appreciate it. <laughs> and as I said, I first met him when he was at the Area Tech Center, but Darrell ended up uh, moving over to Southern, and he was our head custodian there. And I know Southern's going to greatly miss him. Uh, this next custodian, I've known, let's see, I've been over here about 13 years now, and I think I've known him for all of them. And he's been head custodian for a good while there at Wayland Elementary, and that's uh, none other than Joel Renfro. Come on up here, Joel. <laughs> Joel's also a constable. You see his badge up there. He even got a badge on his mask. <laughs> so I won't lose it. <laughs> If you don't mind, we'll get a picture. Thank you very much. Do you have anything you'd like to say? I should have asked you that there. I'll come back to you in a minute. Just thank you for what you do for our students. We appreciate that very much. Thank you for what you did for our students. I'm going to say a quick thank you to Joe. He's carried in the world of boxes <laughs> and books and instructional materials when we had professional development and summer hands. Sure. And he always smiled and was so helpful. Thank you so much. Got got <laughs> <laughs> Special Education Assistant uh, from Wayland Elementary, Bonnie Beto. Didn't see Bonnie with us earlier. Make sure she didn't sneak in, and she did. Um, kindergarten assistant at Horse Branch. Longtime staple has been there in Horse Branch for many years, Miss Rose Autry. Mm -hmm. Come on up here, Miss Rose. <laughs> now, you've held a lot of other positions besides just kindergarten mm -hmm. assistant, right? Yes, kindergarten about 20 years. 20 years in kindergarten, and then a few other things too? Uh, fourth grade. Third grade, pull out programs, but mostly kindergarten. <laughs> Outstanding. Miss Bullock, if you don't care to get a picture. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have anything you'd like to say? Yeehaw. <laughs> <laughs> She's not with us tonight, or at least I don't see her. Miss Linda Roby, she uh, teaches at Western. She has retired, but Miss Linda is unable to be with us tonight. Also unable to be with us tonight is Amelia Etheridge, Etheridge who uh, taught at Southern for many years, but ended up teaching her last two or three, maybe even four years at Beaverdam Elementary. And she's unable to be with us tonight. Also, uh, didn't figure he'd be here tonight, Steve Seegers. Uh, everybody knows Steve Seegers, or Doc, as they call him. Uh, he has retired, and he's been there at Beaverdam for his whole career, being the PE teacher there. Uh, but he has decided to uh, retire. These uh, next two, especially this next one, again, I've been here for 13 years, and she's been one of our administrators the whole time and done an outstanding job and going to be greatly missed there at the high school, Miss Angela Alexander. Do you have anything you'd like to say, no. Miss Angela? Thank you. Thank you for your kind words. Uh, well, we're going to miss you. Angela's been a uh, <laughs> staple there at Ohio County High School. As a matter of fact, she's been the assistant principal for 21, 21 years. years. 21 years she was a principal at the high school. Uh, so it's uh, hard to imagine Ohio County High School without her being in that office area. Talking about hard to imagine without being around. <laughs> Mr. Arthur Hale has been at Ohio County High School, I think, every year since its existence. I well, know the first year. The very first year. So this man had ended up with 50... 44. 54? 54 years of service to Ohio County Schools. I, I can't imagine that. But at no point in time did he slow down or slack off, you still got the same quality instruction in year 54 as I'm sure you did. I wasn't there for year one, but I'm sure it was the same in year one. 
I know that he's taught many of us in chemistry. He taught my brother, uh, who he probably remembers, wasn't the most studious individual. But he went on eventually, after he worked a little bit, he's now a chemical engineer. Um, and then even myself, he would, hopefully he won't tell that, but I probably wasn't the most studious individual as well. But he was my chemistry teacher, and that's what my degree is in, is in chemistry, WKU, and, and it's because of that man in his class that helped spark that interest. Um, outstanding individual, kids loving, fun to be around, Mr. Hale. Get that thing off me. <laughs> yes, sir. We'll let Miss Billock get a get a picture of us here. We close enough, boy. I'm good if you're good. I'm good. <laughs> now I can't imagine that you don't have something to say. All I was gonna wonder is how long you how long have you got? <laughs> how long have I got? <laughs> well, let's just say I'll be lucky to make it to 54 years of age, let alone 54 years of service. Well, that's 227. Most people yeah. might be 27 is good to do it. Anyway, I told these people before y'all got here, uh, I'm ready to go 50 more. Y'all think I'm kidding you. I feel like I could do 50 more. But my... Uh, Creator and your Creator decided it's my time to quit because I can't I can't afford to go to school and take this thing home and kill my wife. I love her as much as I do my kids, and I love them to the end of the world. I've always thought that the least they could give me was their best, and I had to do the same. All that's all I ever expected out of any of them was the best they could do. In fact, uh, I know a young lady that uh, went to the first grade and her first grade card come home. <laughs> All used but one. And that was an S and gets along well. <laughs> but I thought, sure, she did. She parted it well. But anyway, that was, I can see it a Friday now. She came into our house and I'm, her room was over here and mine was over here. And she said, she showed me her grade card. So, I looked at her, and I'm, I'm, I'm really convinced that I, I could have messed her life up forever right there. Because if I'd have raised, if I'd have raised a, a fuss that time, she'd probably turn into a rebel. The next grade card I got was all S's. I never saw anything but straight A's from that day on, anywhere. So, you know what I told her? I looked at it. I said, honey, if that's the best you can do, we'll have to live with it. <laughs> and I meant it. I meant that for your kids, too. If that was the best they can do, they ha I had to live with it. And I, that's all I ever asked your kids was to do the best they can. And I never tried to make them chemists or anything else. I just asked them to do the best they can. But before I get crazy here, I want to thank all of you. You can't take a jackass and feed it bluegrass and have it win the Kentucky Derby. Okay? Now to be a good teacher, you got to have good kids. Now I, I'm not talking about ones that are angels or none like that. I'm talking about ones that are willing to accept instruction. Ones that are willing to, to do that. And I'm sincere that there's no good teacher that ain't got better kids. I appreciate all of them. I love them to death. Every one of them. Uh, on the radio today, the guy asked me, he said, who was the worst student you ever had? I never had one. I never had a worse student. They were all good. Just some of them better than others. Okay? I understand that. But let me tell you what. I think I've been good for Ohio County High School and Ohio County Schools. But let me tell you something else. Ohio County's been good to me. Ohio County has done well by me, and I appreciate it. I appreciate the boards and the superintendents and all the people I've outlasted. I, mean, I, I get to look at Ohio County, Ohio County High School, and I, the list of coaches that I've been through and principals, it's amazing. It was really huh? I said that is so true. And it is. And I got to thank them. Well, I outlived another. <laughs> But I do. I, I want to thank all of you. Y'all do a good job.
You don't get enough credit. Y'all don't get near enough credit for the job you do, and I appreciate it. Thank you. You too, sir. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Also unable to be with us tonight uh, is Ronnie Rock. He was custodian there at Southern for many, many years, and he has retired. And then Billy Garner, who everybody knows Billy. Billy, what job hasn't Billy had <laughs> in Ohio County Schools? Uh, but he uh, retired as custodian there from the middle school. But he's going to be having some surgery this week, maybe even tomorrow. And so with some testing that was done, he was advised not to be present with us tonight. So that accounts for his absence. Um, last but not least is there were some central office folks. Maybe it's me. I mean, give me a complex. Cindy Thompson retired during the school year this past year, and we had given her her clock as a, at a going away dinner that we had here at Potluck. So she's not here tonight. But Cindy Thompson had retired with uh, at least 27 years in. And then also Marlene Robbins, another individual that had been at central office for as long as I can remember. She had uh, retired early on in the school year. But one of those individuals that's also retiring from here is she's here tonight. And I can't uh, really think of a time of her not being with us. Teresa is, uh, Campbell has been here as long as I can remember coming to the Board of Education. And she's not going to be with us much longer. I believe at the end of August is her last day, September 1. End of July. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> August 1. So in about two weeks, <laughs> uh, she'll be fake? leaving us. Is that fake news? <laughs> yeah. Fake news. Teresa has been telling us that she's going to retire for many months. And she's been saying, hey, I'm going to retire. And I think it's going to be August. I'm going to retire. I'm going to retire. So one day she come in with a retirement counter, if you will, like a clock. It said so many days. <laughs> so when she wasn't in her office space back there, I went in there and wrote fake news and stuck a big <laughs> post-it note on it. That's still, still on there. She hasn't taken it down. And she's like, why is this fake news on there? And I said, I'll believe it when I see it. You're, you're not going to retire from this place. Uh, well, obviously she's proven me wrong. She has given us a letter and she is going to be retiring in the very near future. Ms. Teresa Campbell. Somebody else getting pictures oh, behind us. Thank you, ma'am. Do you have anything you'd like to say or share? No, because y'all already got me crying now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank that you have provided our students. Uh, you will be missed, and we wish you nothing but the best. Uh, thank you so much. You're more than welcome to stay, but if you'd like to leave, this would be a good time to get you some goodies and go back through there and uh, peruse and slide on out the front door. Slip slide away. Uh -huh. Good luck, Mr. Coyote. Thank y'all. See you
I won't make a lot of comments tonight and just say that it it continues to be a, an unusual summer. Unlike any summer we've been a part of with all the planning and, and uh, coordinating that we're trying to do. And trust me, we're doing it each and every day, despite what you might hear or read. Uh, nobody's sitting around and, and trying to pass the buck. But each and every week, there's updates from the Department of Education and then even also from the state government. And things are ever-changing. Some of the guidelines that we received in June are not the same guidelines we have today. So we tried to wait and hold some of those plans closer to our chest just because we hated to keep issuing. Here's a new plan. Here's a new plan. And I still don't have a plan that we're revealing for you tonight, but we are going to talk about later in the agenda some instructional options and what instruction will look like in Ohio County. And I'll have some more to say about that later. But there, there's so many things that we have been working on and, and trying to plan, and so many things that we have been ordering and continue to order, from face masks to hand sanitizer to gloves to you name it. We, we've been thinking of all the different aspects and what we need to do. Extracurriculars uh, are still occurring at the moment. They're still mandated by certain guidelines on how they have to practice. They're still supposed to be in their groups of 10. Even though multiple groups can be out there, they're still supposed to be 10 together and, and not touching the same ball necessarily, at least with their hands. So it's still very limited, and that's the phase we continue to be in with the exception of golf. Golf has been given the green light to have competitions if they're set up in the near future. All the other sports are basically on hold. Um, and with some increase in spiking that we've had with some of our numbers, I don't know if they'll even make it to the start of the season. I think the Board of Directors for Athletics meets not this Friday, but a week from tomorrow. And I, I guess to may suspect that they will push back fall sports. Uh, some rumors have said they might even move it to the spring. I doubt that they make that abrupt change right now, but I do look for them to delay the start of things until some of these numbers dwindle back down and get more in check. With the, with the spiking and the increases we're having, I don't think you're going to see things uh, opened up. We did, uh, I got your blessing on in text messaging to go ahead and release some information on Facebook, and part of that was a survey. Just to let you know a little bit about that survey, we've already had about a thousand, and well, this was about midday, so there's probably more than that by now, but I took a snapshot, or Daniel McCoy did for me. There was 1,026 respondents when we looked today. And many of those were for multiple kids. So you're looking at right at 2,000 kids that we had heard from. So close to half of our population. And the one question about, will you attend school, um, you know, wearing the safety precautions, following the CDC guidelines, yes, no, or need more info? 48% uh, the folks said yes, we're coming back to school. So that's 48 percent. 22 percent said no, don't feel comfortable in attending school in person right now. 30 percent, which is a big chunk, needs more information. So that tells me that I've got some more work to do. I'm going to have to, either tomorrow or beginning of next week, explain more about virtual, what it is, what it looks like, how it works, so that people can make a more informed decision. So that way that 30% will either move to yes or to no instead of lingering and waiting to see. There was also a question on there that said in-person versus remote instruction. 54% said we want an in-person instruction. 46% said remote. And again, I'm thinking that lack of explanation on some of those questions. They need to understand in-person means in-school. Remote, what we really meant by remote is that it's going to be online. It will be virtual based. It won't necessarily be one of our teachers teaching it. It would be a program. So I need to clarify that before we issue another survey. And I don't know necessarily that there will be a, another survey, but other than we're going to clarify what virtual means. And in the near future, in the next week or two, we will issue an online application for virtual. And that online application will ask questions like, do you have internet? Do you have a device to connect to internet? Or do you need a device? And if they need a device, 
we'll take care of that. We will find the device for them to utilize if that's the missing ingredient or missing piece for virtual. But there's, there's several things we still need to get out to share information. But I felt like we needed to do at least what we did this week because people were really curious about is there going to be an online option. So we felt I felt like we had to tell them that we couldn't wait to just tonight, that we had to get it out there uh, to let them know. And uh, we'll continue to let them know some more information. And then one day next week, I told Jerry that I would be on the radio show with him and we'd spend the hour talking about school and possibilities on what it might look like in scenarios, so forth and so on. Um, that's all I have to say under superintendent comments, Mr. Chair. All right. All right. You have your consent agenda in front of you. I need a motion to second to approve it. I'll second. All right. I have a motion and a second. Any other comment? All in favor? Motion carried. Actually, Mr. Chairman, I, I've overlooked some of them. Would you care to entertain? Let me uh, handle yeah, something. Yeah, you have uh, I'm up here busy looking at my notes and actually forgot one of my notes. You know, last month we shared that we had a new principal at Fordsville Elementary and we introduced Jason McConnell. And this month we have a new principal at Wayland. You all know that. I texted you that and I'm sure you've seen it on Facebook since then. But that principal's here tonight. It's none other than Adam Sawwester, and Adam is the new principal of Wayland. You all have met him before because he came and talked about the vocational school. Mm -hmm. But certainly wanted to recognize him and give him the opportunity if he wanted to say anything. And then I'd like to get your picture even, Adam, yeah. if you don't mind. Uh, I'd just like to thank you all uh, for giving me the opportunity to, to uh, lead a great school at Wayland. Um, you guys gave me a great opportunity to lead a vocational school, and I loved it there. But sometimes God tugs on your heartstrings to go somewhere else even when you get to go kicking and screaming and that's kind of what I did. And, uh, you know, I'm very lucky to be at Wayland and there's a great group of kiddos there and I've been meeting with my staff this week and last week and we've got a great group of adults that work in that building and I just look forward to the start of the year, whatever that looks like. So thank you all. I won't come back around, but if you don't mind to come up here. Sure. And uh, let Miss Bullock get your picture. Sure. That way that I can share that. I need to share Mr. McConnell still as well, but that way I can let everybody know who those new faces are. <laughs> there Thank you, sir. Appreciate Thank you. It. Thank you, guys. Adam will do a great job there at Wayland. He did an outstanding job there at the vocational school, and I have no doubt he'll continue to do so. Also, uh, he's not here tonight because he had a previous engagement, but I texted you all uh, yesterday or the day before to let you know that the new Ohio County Area Tech Center principal that took Adam's place is Alex Emery. So Alex will be joining us next month to receive his an, an official induction if you will and he'll be with us that in august but we certainly welcome alex and congratulate him as well sorry mr chair how i you now i have your chair to report just for your meeting and now we're ready for the check of the chair to report she got a big old back <laughs> You should see my office. <laughs> oh, you did see my yeah, office. Yeah. 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 It's that time of year. All right. Okay. Of course, this is for the month of June. I'm going to take this off so my uh, voice isn't so muted, if you don't mind. Um, of course, for the month of June, we started the month with $15,851,032. Our total revenue for the month, $3,242,136.71. Total expenditures, $4,042,376.58. Brings us to an end of month general ledger balance of $15,050,760.45. Our Barrett investments had a market value of $2,239,253.72 and a payout value of $2,132,407. On the bank side, we began the month with $16,096,611.35. 
our seek allotment payment for the month, one million five sixty eight six sixty six. The state and federal grant proceeds, five hundred fifty three thousand five thirty one seventy eight. The second half from KDE for our building fund was four hundred eighty six thousand five thirty nine. The utilities taxes from the revenue cabinet, and this included two months worth, if you'll notice, compared to this same month last year. Um, it's about double what it was, and that's because it was for two months worth of collections, $202,097.54. The food service reimbursements, that's down, as you would expect it to be for uh, the previous month, $165,308.94. And we continue to get a little property taxes. Those uh, totaled $75,741.20. Motor vehicle tax, $59,602.54. And bank interest of $3,540.92. And you can see the uh, other smaller amounts listed. But total deposits for the month, $3,195,393.59. Less, uh, uh, or less our checks that cleared. Uh, brought us to an end of month balance on the bank side of 16425882.28. And then we remove our outstanding checks from our side, brings us back to a balance of 15050760 So we're up about 1.1 million compared to where we were at last year. So I think we were kind of shooting for about a million where we were expecting to be at least. And so we're, we're pretty close, but um, I do have some more adjustments that will take place um, over the next couple of weeks. So those numbers will change. These are preliminary results for the end of the month as well as the year. So, um, but I don't expect it to be materially off from that amount. So, um, but we did, did have a good year financially. We had some things that uh, obviously uh, unexpected things happen during the year, um, but yet we were stable and are able to handle those. You know, we took hits with bank interest. Our seek, uh, seek payment was down for the whole year quite a bit, about three hundred fifty to four hundred thousand um, dollars But we are, you know, we still are ending the year good. So, any questions about any of that? Do I? Thank you all. Thank you. All right. Any motion to approve Treasury report, please? No, motion. I'll second the motion. Any questions? All in favor? All right, amended. Yeah, you obviously have approved the school calendar before, but that was before things continued to be. Uh, yeah, that was. Uh, before things continue to be kind of a, up in the, the air and a mess across the nation, not just the state. So this was something, I, again, I'd asked your input on and, and got your blessing ahead of time to go ahead and get this information out. And then tonight I need you to officially approve it. But it's where we were amended the school calendar so that we don't start until August 26. By doing that, that allows you to just do the 1,062 hours requirement instead of that hours requirement plus the plus 170 days. So the way this works out, we will have school 163 days. But those 163 days will equal 170 days for all of our employees. So basically they get seven freebies, if you will, because of this equivalency that the law allows if you start after August 24th. Any year you start after August 24th, you just adhere to the 1,062 hours instead of the day requirement. So they're going to get that equivalency benefit. So our staff will actually come in to work, because usually we do 173. That calendar will give them the equivalent of 170. So they owe us three days, and then opening day. So all staff will report to work on August the 20th. That everybody will be in the buildings by then. That way they can do those three days and then be there for opening day. But this calendar, what you've been asked to approve tonight, is a 163-day cal calendar beginning on August 26th. It still has a fall break, still has a spring break. Uh, we start two weeks later and basically get out almost two weeks earlier. So didn't change much. It was almost an uh, even swap. Uh, but that would be the calendar that I would ask you to amend and approve this evening. 
All right. You have a superintendent's recommendation and a gallery recommendation. Any motion and a second? I have a motion. All right. I have a motion. I'll second motion. All right. We have a second. Any questions? Yeah. All right. <laughs> so I sent you the tweet. You had seen it from the governor today mm -hmm. that. If all this with the Attorney General asking for all of the governor's COVID what decisions be overturned, can we approve this calendar with a caveat of can be changed? Yes, because this, this calendar bill is established by the legislators yeah. and has been in place for a few years now. Two or three years ago, they wanted to delay start for tourism in the Kentucky Lake area, that way more people would spend money. So this has actually been in place and it's a bill that's already passed. This is not something that the current governor has touched. This is not one of his reforms that he's put in place for COVID. Okay, so if he says no school, if he says school can't start? If he says school can't start and if all school boards comply, then that means we would start an NTI like we ended last year, we'd start with everybody doing remote learning, but school would still start on the 26th. That would just mean we might not be in the building if he okay. does that to us. But we would still start and be starting to count our, count our days down, if you will. Okay. Hey, you want to know when you get? I know, I, I got to ask. Yeah, you're fine. You're Always fine. ask. Yeah, never leave here and wish you had a day. That's right. I know. Oh, no, that's <laughs> true. We all We all All in favor? Okay. All right. Okay. Approve our options. Yes, this is approved our 2021 school year options. And now what that is not, that's not our overall reopening plan, okay? We won't tackle that until August because we're still six weeks away from school starting and more guidance I'm sure will be handed down. And there's also some things that we still haven't received guidance on yet as far as sick days and how they're used and how do you handle if someone gets quarantined? Do they have to use their sick days or does that FMLA, COVID FMLA kick in? There's still a lot of guidance that we need to receive before we can put the whole package together. But this is our instructional options. Very similar to what you saw me post on Facebook and that I asked you about previously. And basically there would be three main options. The first being in person. That's the traditional how we have school each and every year. As you saw me put online, there's no doubt in my mind that is the best version of education that we can ever offer being in front of us, letting us provide that instruction. So that's traditional. If we have traditional, and we plan on it right now, beginning August 26, we will follow all of the CDC guidelines that have been set forth. We've been working on plans, and I don't, I won't share them with you tonight, but procedures for pickup, procedures for drop off, procedures for hallways, procedures for transportation. And basically what all that means on most of these procedures, as you, as you saw me post, Masks will be required to be worn unless we can social distance. If we can social distance, then the mask can come down. So what that means is anytime they're in the hallway, we're going to have to mask up. That's just, it is what it is. But once they're in the classroom with the percentage of kids that are planning on doing remote learning or online, I believe we have a realistic chance in most classrooms to social distance and spread out. So once everybody's in a seat, the teacher could then give the signal or say, you can take your mask down. They could take them off or if they're on a lanyard or whatever, but then they could do their instruction, be a little more comfortable, unless they want to leave it on, then naturally they can leave it on. But then anytime they're going to move throughout the room, they would obviously have to put their mask back on. When the bell rings, if you're out of high school and you're going to transition to the next class, you're going to have to put your mask back on. So that's, that's the rule on masks. Been getting that question a lot. We have to wear them on the bus all the time. And at school, anytime we're transitioning and anytime we can't social distance. It's our hope, again, that we can social distance in the classroom and take the mask down. 
the mass come down, they're eating lunch. So we're going to have to figure out our lunch strategies on how we can make sure kids are separated enough to eat lunch comfortably. And, and even where to put them and, and how to put them, uh, we may have to use, example for the high school, we have three lunch shifts. That's 400 kids per lunch. Um, we can't get 400 kids in the lunchroom right now in social distance. So we plan on using the gym. There will not be any fifth period uh, PE classes. So the gym will be empty. So we're going to use the upper bleachers. We'll mark off X's. Here's the places where you can sit. So some kids will be able to go eat in the gymnasium. Some will stay in the cafeteria. That way everybody can spread out. We can eat lunch with the mask down and be social distant. Hallways, another thing that's been uh, strongly recommended by KDE is that hallways be one direction. At some schools, that's going to be impossible. But at the high school, we can do it. It's a little inconvenient. If you're here and your class is here, the next one it's closer to go this way, that we may have to say, hey, the first hallway is going this direction, the middle hallway is going that direction. So if you come out of class, yeah, your other class may be here in this hallway, but you're going to have to walk down, come over, and then walk up. They recommend that they not pass one another, that you limit those opportunities if you can. So when possible, we'll try to do that. When possible. But I say that because some schools it's not possible. You go to Western Elementary. Miss Lori is sitting here with us tonight. Can't work. They have one big hallway going down through there. One. So there's not going to be a hallway for going down and a hallway for coming back. They're going to have to pass. They'll just have to be in masks anytime they're in a the hallway. Same in many of our buildings, Force Branch. A lot of our elementaries, you're only going to have one-way traffic. But at middle and high school, we could probably try to help the traffic flow. Um, hand sanitizer, we're, we're purchasing many, many gallons. I think today was figured up that we have about 350 classrooms. So you know what's our plan to order about 1,200 gallons of hand sanitizer. So there will be a gallon sitting in every classroom. And then when they run out, we're already going to have replacements here on hand to replace. And as we start using them, we'll order more. That way we'll always have plenty on hand. Um, obviously, we'll give them ample opportunities throughout the day to wash their hands. So we'll take all those precautions that we can, everything that's recommended by the CDC. Second option is the virtual online. This is where I think I'm going to have to clarify a little better because a lot of people, when I put Odyssey Wear, they didn't know what Odyssey Wear means, and that's my fault because I've used it for years and dealt with it for years and should have known that to most people are like, what are you talking about? But Odyssey Wear is what we use at the high school for credit recovery. If a kid's ever behind, they can take that entire course on that software program instead of being in the classroom. Well, we're going to utilize that for K through 12. There's, there's for K through two, it's called a Spark, but it's made by Odyssey. And then third grade on up, it's Odyssey Wear. Most every course that we offer, most, not all, can be found on Odyssey Wear. So a student can do this online curriculum and they don't have direct interaction with our teachers. It's all based on the, the online curriculum. There's videos, there's what they watch, there's uh, little instructional, there's a teacher teaching, but it's not our teacher. They might go through a mini lesson and then they complete the activities with it. And then what we do, we monitor that. We have someone in each building that's assigned to monitor, is the kid making progress? Are they on it? Are they working? If not, let's call mom and dad and say, hey, Dwight over here, it's been a week since he's logged on to Odyssey Wear. What's going on? He needs to make sure he's doing his work. You know, we're going to have to make sure that people are abreast and aware of what's going on. If a kid is stuck, they email and ask questions. The email comes to us so that we can then answer it. We're here, let me give you some additional help. Let me give you some additional explanations. Or hey, someone will call you and help walk you through that and explain it. FaceTime you, whatever we need to do. We'll help you figure it out so that you can keep moving in that study. Um, so that's what we're looking at using, again, high school, when kids are out long term now for home hospital, we sometimes put them on Odyssey Wear. They take all seven credits online. That same curriculum is available for the middle school. So every class here at the middle school, we could put them in Odyssey Wear and replicate the same thing if that's the option the parent chooses. Elementary, we haven't used it before, but we're looking at it. Uh, 
I still need to have Miss Bullock look at it to make sure that it all looks good to her. I've looked at it, and and the material is is good that's on there. My only question for the elementary was, was it enough? And she had mentioned and reminded me that we have iReady also at the elementary level, so we could supplement. We could have a combination. Here you're going to do Odyssey and iReady, and that will give them plenty of content then to have to work on if they choose the virtual online option. Uh, so those programs in one sense are kind of standalone. If the kid has internet access, they can do it at their own pace and keep on trucking. We just monitor it from a distance. The third option is NTI, non-traditional instruction. Here's what I want to preface that. I don't, I don't want NTI this year to look like NTI last year. We gave even my own children that are high school students come home with something like that or thicker. Here's my NTI. It was massive a lot all at once and it was because it was new to everybody. We didn't really know what to expect and we tried to build that plane within 24 hours. This year, as you can put my NTI, what I put, I want it to be ran more like how we run our home hospital program where every week we gather up those materials, send it to the home, collect what they've been working on. We take the stuff that's complete, we give them new, and we keep trading off every week or every other week. So it won't be home hospital instruction, but I want to kind of model it like that so that we're still having that interaction weekly, if not bi-weekly, instead of here it is, do it, and have it turned in in a month. I'm not, what, I'm not a fan of that. That's not enough contact. That's not enough interaction. So I would want us to use the home hospital model. And again, that option is only if you cannot or will not do one or two. I really want you to be in person. If you can't do that, we'll offer online. But if you're adamant about not coming in person and you don't have internet capability, we will set up that third option for you. That way you don't feel forced and to sending your kid to school or feel forced back in the corner where you feel like I've got a homeschool. I want us to provide the options that way people don't have to go homeschool. They can still get served through us. So that's the three options that I'm proposing that we do and that I'll need your blessing on here in a moment. Um, I did put a little note on there that it's probably going to happen, folks. At some point in time, they're going to say, you need to shut down. Or we're going to say, because of our numbers, we need to shut down. We're going to have to do NTI in the next two weeks. Well, when we do that, I want it to be different. I still, if possible, if health guidelines will allow it, I still want our staff to come to work. They can mask up, come in the classroom, shut their door, take their mask off, they're in their room. I still want them to teach in front of the computer, in front of the camera, and any kid in the district that has a phone that can get data or internet or whatever, they can still watch and hey, I can still see Miss Knopfsinger and she's going to teach me for two hours a day. I want us to have that direct instruction and only do NTI paper if they just don't have that capability. So I'll put that in there just that way you know what I was thinking. They'll be using Zoom meetings, Google Classrooms. Here's another hot button topic. And, uh, Taking the easy way out tonight. A question for you on that. Yeah. Now the virtual online, you said they can go at their own pace. Can we control how many lessons they do, like in a week, so they don't just yeah if they're capable book through it and if if, if they're going them. too fast, it can be throttled down or slowed down right. if if somebody is blazing. But but in my experience at the high school level, when they have seven courses, nobody's going to go through it so fast when they're done in the first semester. There's a lot of material there. It's going to take a little while because most kids aren't going to work six hours a day. I more and more worried about the elementary students. The parents getting in there, getting yeah. sick of helping them, getting, knocking it out. Yeah. When they're done, <laughs> that could be a potential problem. And unfortunately, we're not going to be there to be able to. But apparently, if we can throttle it back to where yeah. only so many can slow it down yeah. so that so many right. can occur that once that is feasible, that is possible. Uh, this next option that I put there. Um, was if you're virtual or NTI, can you participate in extracurriculars? I put right now that that's undetermined, that we'll determine that within the next couple of weeks, and here's why. 
Right now, if you ask me tonight, I would say my recommendation is absolutely not. They can't come to school, they don't play sports. And I thought everybody in my region was on board with me with that. So I was going to share that with you tonight. But in today in my regional superintendent meeting this afternoon, I've already had two of them drop out and go back to yes. And then the other two couple others were wavering and at their board meetings next week was thinking about saying yes. So I didn't want you to say, no, we're not going to allow it tonight, and then me come back to you two weeks from now and say, hey, we may have to make changes. Warren County is already. They're already allowing it. If you're, if you're still enrolled in their system, you can play sports in Warren County. And High School Athletic Association hasn't helped us out. They have said, as long as the kid is enrolled in your school, we don't care if it's virtual or not. If they're enrolled in your school, they're eligible for athletics. So it may be difficult to take the stance that I'd like to take and say, come to school or otherwise don't play. Because to me, it's kind of logical. If, if, if you don't want your kid to come to school, exactly. why do you want to go play a sport? Exactly, and that's why I struggle with that one. When there's actually going to be contact in most fall sports. That's right. But, but it's a small, on the other side of that, it's a smaller group of people. It's not like being in the classroom and walking up and down the hall. You're in a, you with the same people every day in the same space. That's right, but those people didn't walk still have, the hall. You still well, have fans, too. <laughs> You know, but those other few teammates down on the fence about did go to the class yeah. you know, down the hall. But well, see, athletic association threw the monkey on our back. Is what it was. They didn't. They said that. each local district needs yeah. to make that determination. And they, they had it before that you couldn't do it. That's but right. if we're the only district that says no, you can't do it, then we're going to be. We're going to have to back up the punch. So that's yeah. why I said tonight it's undetermined because within two weeks I think we're going to know the answer. I really think, I could be wrong, but I think High School Athletic Association is going to push sports back. So if they do, then it's not even an issue. <laughs> you know, I don't know that sports be going on. But but it, if everybody else is going to allow it, we can't not allow it. That, that's not fair. If all of our neighbors say, hey, we're going to let them play, then it's not fair for me to be the one that says, well, I'm not going to let you. Yeah, that's uh, not. So that's why I put undetermined. So we'll get back to that one later. Also notice this last statement here. I put, this is a summary of the options. As of 7, 16, 20, this is subject to change as things continue to change <laughs> in our nation and in our state. I think that's going to have to be a statement on everything. And here's why I say that. This is the options I want you to approve tonight, but don't be shocked if sometime between now and we meet again in August that I'm not texting you and emailing you and asking you about an AV option. Or asking you or telling you, hey, we're not going to go to school. We're going to start the year on NTI. It's possible. We don't know what's going to happen yet in these next six weeks. If things continue to get worse, we may not be able to start school. If things stay the same or get better, we'll be in good shape to start. So that's why I preface that as, as of today, this is the plan. Plan could change in a couple of weeks, but this is what I would ask you to approve tonight. Jefferson County's already said they're not going in the fall. That's right. And was it Bowling Green and Warren County's doing the two day a week stuff? Warren County's doing an AB, Grayson County's doing an AB, and I actually learned this afternoon in my two o'clock superintendent's meeting that Davis County and Owensboro is fixing to go to the AB. Yeah, I heard they're going to have kids go two times a week and three days a week will be remote. Oh. So one group will come Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday's a deep cleaning, another group comes Thursday and Friday. So that's why I preface that. As we continue to get more information, I may be coming to you again asking for permission or blessing to throw out another option. All right. Do you have the superintendent's recommendation? I'll make the motion. I'll second the motion. All the back. All right. And any approval of beverage coming back? Yeah, approved beverage marketing bids. Let, let me preface something here. I need to uh, apologize a little bit. We were under the impression still that no matter what, we were getting that $10,000. And as you can imagine, things have been a little hectic the last couple of days for me, and it's been hard for Kathy to get a hold of me. Well, today about 5 o'clock, she finally catches me in my office with the door open. 
and she shares with me a conversation that she had with uh, Pepsi, and what is guaranteed is the Eagle Club money. The other monies are based upon cases sold. So we are not guaranteed 10000 for sure for the first year. But that was my understanding, and that's what I had shared with some of you, and so I want to correct that. There is no guarantee of 10000 The only guarantee is $2,500. Uh, we would have to sell cases in order to get more money. And if we're in school, we will sell cases, and we'll get another $2,500 to $5,000 if we're in school and able to have events. But who knows right now what all that's going to look like. But I wanted to clarify that because it's not 10000 it's 2500 Well, we had obviously two vendors bid. We were expecting a third uh, from our current vendor that we've had for many years, that partnership. They're going through a transition right now, a change of ownership, and they're just not able to bid at this time. It's going to be a few more months before they can bid, and so that's why that third one is, is not there this month. So really, your options are tonight is, one, um, don't accept bids, but then we don't have any contract, and really anything can go, and there's no guarantee of any money. So that's one option, not have it, and you can use any vendor you want. But if we're going to have a marketing agreement and we're going to have an exclusivity based upon the bids that we received for tonight, you know, I would have to recommend if we're going to have exclusivity that it would have to be with Pepsi over Coke. They're the only two that bid and they gave guaranteed money and Coke did not. Coke did not give any guaranteed money. Their commission was 20%, Pepsi was 34%. So looking at it on paper out of those two, Pepsi is your best deal. So my recommendation is if we're going to have exclusivity based off tonight's bids, we'd have to go to Pepsi. Uh, but I will let you all entertain uh, whatever your choice is at this time. Ms. Kathy, did I add or miss anything that needs to be added? That's accurate. Considering this has to do with funds, I, I usually like to ask your opinion. If you would rather not, then that's perfectly fine as well. But I'll. Well, I think given given the situation, given the two options that we have, it does make the most financial sense to, to go with Pepsi at this time. That's what we have on the table. And we really have nothing to fall back on at this point. And this is for three years? Yes, it yes. is three years. Mm -hmm. We could rebid at that time, or this does allow us, if both parties agree to maintain the same specifications, then it can be renewed for another three years. But that would be your decision. Well, I'll make the motion we go with Pepsi. All right, we have a motion and a second. All second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Any other comments? All in favor? Set that schedule, but 
with the timeline that KDE is working on and HBC both. Uh, what we've been doing is submitting those drawings up for approval, and once we get their approval, we will set the bid date uh, because it could be four weeks, six weeks before we get that. And if we set them out to the contractors, we don't get our approval back for six weeks, and they've got comments that we got to reissue things. Uh, so we're going to submit these based on the board's approval to both the uh, Department of Education and uh, how they're doing construction. The plan, the specification, they're, they're, they're stamped, they're sealed, uh, they're ready to go uh, to be approved. Hopefully, if things go well, uh, we, can, we can look at taking bids in, in late August uh, and then start our, start our construction in the fall. Best case scenario at this point, but that's, this is the, uh, it's the last uh, the last approval for for this project. It'd be my recommendation that we approve the construction document for Wayland Preschool. That way, that can be submitted to the uh, KDE. Uh, motion. Right. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. <coughs> All there. Okay. All right. Ohio County High School graduation service. Yeah, I don't know if you had a chance to look at it or not, but in your packet, we included a letter from Mr. Asbury, and I thought he did a really nice job. He and I talked on the phone, and I just said, "Well, put all that in writing," and, and he did, and I, I thought it looked really good. Mm -hmm. And it basically gives procedures and precautions that they would take. But long story short. As you can see, he promised the kids that if at all possible, we're going to have these events. And he and I have discussed, and we believe it is possible, using the Beaverdale Amphitheater and their 50% capacity that they're allowed to use at this time, and they can hold well over 5,000. So that means we could have 2,500 there. And the whole lower area that's concrete, we feel that we can put all the students and staff there and, and dis distance and, and still stay within the guidelines. So what he has proposed for, proposed for you tonight, because you as the board actually set the graduation date, we had originally set it at a certain date and time as he's asked us if we would move it to Thursday, August the 6th at 7 p.m. and then be at the Beaver Down Amphitheater. And then he also goes on to say that they would then like to have prom on that Saturday at 8, also at the amphitheater. Um, I'm okay with them having prom as well, but what I'd ask you tonight is to approve that they can have a graduation ceremony at the amphitheater on Thursday, August the 6th at 7 p.m. It's my recommendation that we would approve and allow that the ceremony to occur before kids go to college. So they want to have prom at the amphitheater, too? Yes. I didn't get that from this letter. All amphitheater, that way it's outdoors and outside instead of inside of any. Yeah. Yes, um, and the stage is covered somewhat so they can dance. And that area out front is all concrete, concrete now. Yeah. And so it's a, it's nice. They, it's a nice facility. They do a nice facility. They continue to make improvements, and it's it's, it's a pretty place. Well, I, I like the idea of having it outside. I think it would be great. Been in the evening. Hopefully, it won't be quite as hot. Uh, but I think it's a. The design and what he has planned out on how they'll handle it, I think it's, uh, I think they're ready for it, and the kids certainly deserve to have that in-person moment. And uh, my recommendation is to approve it. I'll make a motion. I'll second. All right, I'll real quick. All the back. Here. We have a reason to close session. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, All right, and then I'll also go ahead and close the session for KRS 61.810. I'll, I'll second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? This one is the battery.